Where are we? We are in my room. Nice. So before we have some sexy time, <laughs> uh, why don't you why don't you just get, uh, show us some of your cool stuff? Like cool stuff? I don't know, man. I don't like cool stuff. Some cameras and some shit. Nice. Yeah. So uh, what were what are your bad boys right here? Oh, it's just some random stuff. My. Uh, why don't you why don't you come over? Give us a little tour. I have uh, a Nikon F3, uh -huh. uh, a Polaroid, Fuji Instant, some random, random stuff laying around. Shit I use. Oh, this is sweet. Is this the, the Contex? Yeah, it's a TBS. Oh, how do you like this? It's cool. I like it a lot. I like the 28 millimeter on it. Oh, sweet. And uh, what, are, what are all these books you have down here? Oh, I don't know. There's just some random photo books, some zines, uh, Hamburger Eyes, Dato, Chris Aju. More hamburger eyes, Emilio Vamuelos, some Keith Herring, everybody, uh, Street Photography Now, let's see, uh, Richard Kern, my favorite. Oh, that's pretty sexy. Beau Roulette, uh, Office by Lars Tungberg. Oh, that one's the best one. Grim Street, Mark Cohen. I got him laying around. Sweet. Oh, this is, this is the, the handlers used for your, your shoot recently, huh? Yeah. Nice. Workstation. Stuff. <laughs> so, uh, so Joe, what's 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 new in your life? Nothing much, man. Just working on photos, working on the next move, doing stuff. What is what is the next move? I don't know. Putting together another book, another. I want to do more exhibitions this year. Uh huh. Uh, zines, stuff like that. When you you talked about how uh, hamburger eyes closed down, right? Yeah, they closed. Uh, well, not closed, but they moved. So Ray is moving, setting up shop somewhere else. And then uh, tell us tell us more about you know your interest, I guess, in publishing and stuff. Uh, it's just, you know, it's, I mean, it's selfish. I want to make my own books, put out my own <laughs> stuff, and I want to, yeah. <laughs> I want to do it cheaper, so uh -huh. that's pretty much it. Uh-huh. So, or so, you were, we were talking about it before, tell yeah, us, uh, I don't know, I just feel like it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, if you want to do it yourself, and you want to put together, you know, cohesive bodies of work, and you want to get it out there, it's like not everyone's going to gain the attraction of a publisher, or a small bookmaking company, and, uh, you know, zines and, and things like that are the way to go even if you got a staple on yourself in xerox and i mean as long as you're putting it together and it, it works good it it shouldn't matter what the quality is you know but i want to i definitely want to like explore more of a um, uh, higher end printing and, and you know perfect binding things like that so the, the question is um what's the benefit of um, maybe doing self-publishing like doing yourself versus let's say using uh, print on demand service like blurb uh blurb is just too expensive i've mm -hmm. done it a couple times um and it is the shipping is murder. Yeah. Uh, it takes a month to get your product. Yeah. Um, I recommend docu copies. It's what we do with all the fine rangers. Docu uh, docu copy. Yeah, docu copies. It's in um, it's in San Diego. Um, they do uh, you know, you, you make your own PDF, and uh, you can send it to them, and they publish on demand. Oh, nice. Um, free shipping, I believe. This is Carson Lancaster's uh, Japan book. Oh, Carson did a book. Yeah, a little uh, Japanese. When did uh, uh, is this? How how recently did he do this? Uh, he just got back from Japan. Uh, he went this year and then came back, and it took a few months to go through everything. Uh huh. You know, so this is one one copy that uh, he gave me. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. How much how much they charge they charge for like a size like this? I don't know. It all depends on basically the material, the binding, um, and the amount. I mean, the more you get, the more. Uh, the more you order, the more um, discount you get, I guess. Is there like a minimum order? No, I don't think so. I think you can order just a couple at a time. Um, but you know, I would suggest, you know, uh, order of 20 to 50 at least. So if you want to start your own, I guess like um, your own publishing house and you want to start making your own um, publications, like what exactly does that even look like? like? I have even no idea. It's like- Oh, I don't do know. You, well, like, do you, you buy the, the machine? Do you buy the, uh, <laughs> like- It's not so much as like a publishing house. Like all you all you really need is a, a way to uh, Xerox um, mm -hmm. or, or print. Yeah. And you need a way to bind things. And you know, you could, I mean, you could fold them in half and rubber band them together if you want. And that's, that's cool. But um, you know, you can get a thermal binder and a book crimper and a printer uh -huh. and you wouldn't need much space for it. You just need, you know, uh, to know how to lay it out, you need to know a little bit of InDesign, some Photoshop, uh -huh. um, you know, <laughs> and keep up on cost materials. So, so how uh, how expensive it would be to to get started? Uh, it'll it'll cost a chunk of change to start to start. You know, if you want to go out and buy all the machines right at once, uh -huh. but you know, you can start you know like uh, from the bottom and just go to Kinkos and start doing yours that way and yeah. work over the you know course of a year to get yourself a thermal binder for 
a couple hundred bucks and a book crimper for a couple hundred bucks. And uh -huh. I think what's going to cost you the most money is a printer. The printer. You oh, know? Okay. Uh -huh. um, but even then, you know, you can still outsource that, you know. If you looked into like, um, I guess like printing in like China and stuff like that, I know a lot of publishers doing I've that. I've seen nowadays. a lot of good things come out of there, um, and you know the, the canvas bound, tipped in photos in the in the in the in the front of the book, everything like that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, why not? But that's if you're doing a a, a monograph, not a yeah. not a small art book or a zine or something yeah, like uh -huh. that. So that would definitely be something that you're gonna sink like fifteen to twenty five grand in. Yeah, that's uh, that's so, a huge chunk of change. You know. So, uh, so Joe, since the last time we've done our last interview, what's uh, what's changed? Nothing. Uh, uh, L.A. and back uh, wasn't working too well, I guess, uh, in a way. And then just, you know, I uh, came back up here and just realized that I was where I kind of wanted to be still. Um, I don't know. I just kind of want to, you know, be able to pack up and travel a little bit more. Yeah. Maybe not, maybe not uh, move per se, but like stay minimal um, and just keep producing work and stuff. Hmm. So what, what exactly is it about the the Bay Area or San Francisco in particular? Like, uh, why just, not like move to somewhere feel, a little bit I cheaper, like, like Oakland or? Oh, I don't know. It's just like, across the bridge, across the bridge, is whatever. I yeah. mean, I, I I don't. I just kind of like living here. I like the I like my friends. I like you know we're close to where I work, things yeah. like that. Um, and at the same time, it's like uh, everyone's leaving. You know? Leaving SF. Yeah, well, everyone's leaving because it's, it sucks. It's expensive. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, nobody, nobody roots for the underdog. Galleries aren't, you know, showing a lot of, uh, you know, n you know, underdogs or up and comers or things like that. Yeah. And it's just harder to catch a break. It's harder to pay the rent. It's mm. you know, everyone's fighting for the same penny. Yeah. You know, and so at the same time, it's like, I mean. I might as well stand here and fight it until I can't, and then you know go somewhere where I, if I have to. So. Mm. And uh, how have you seen I guess uh, SF change over the years? Uh, you know, I don't know. It's always had its fair share of you know opportunists and weirdos. <laughs> at the same time, you know, I mean the gold rush mentality. Yep, yep, you know, nice. It's always, it's always been Niners. <laughs> it's always been here though. It's like I mean people are always uh, you know trying to come here to you know either find themselves or be themselves that they've mm -hmm. always wanted to be and mm -hmm. you know at the same time it's always had a, a steady influx of uh of tech money coming in you yeah know? And so, so how do you feel about like these uh these googlers coming in and you know i i mean honestly it's it's not just them but at the same time it's uh i mean it's it's everybody it's people collecting the rent money it's yeah paying yep, the rent money yep. you know so other than that i mean i'm happy with what i have i don't have a lot that's you good you know um but at the same time, it's it's changed. You know, there's more. Uh, there's less. Um, there's less grit. But that doesn't mean it's uh, it's less dirty. Hmm. You know what I mean? I think dirty and gritty are completely different things. Yeah. It's less. It's less real. It's less um, real. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, it's less. It's just. Um, it's just lighter, a lighter version of what it used to be. I guess I don't know. Hmm. I mean, even the, even you know the I, the mission's a little a lot different. The TL's different. You know, everything's closing. Yeah. Um, I've been I've been really impressed with uh, all of your improvements in your photography the last few months. And I mean, how long were you knowing each other, now, Joe? Like four or five years. Four or five years now, right? Yeah. So I remember when I first met you, at, like the Lomo store, and now it means uh, it looks like your work's starting to evolve a lot, not just street, but um, you know, personal documentary, mm -hmm. portraiture, nudes. Um, what What's interesting you right now in your photography? Uh, narrative. Um, narrative. Well, I mean, I think that's like, if you have a bunch of single images, yeah, you can just put them on the wall and say, "Hey, these are my single images." Yeah. Or you can work on a narrative, and it doesn't necessarily have to be you know straight documentary. It can be a lyrical narrative. It can yeah. be a, it can be a feeling you lead somebody through your work with, but. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, through and through, I'm a street photographer. It's what it's what I started loving. It's what I started doing. Yep. Um, and at the same time, uh, I, I have other interests, you know, in portraits and friends and my family and life and, you know, um, making fine art portraits, you know, going to the beach with, uh, you know, deer antlers. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, like, the, like recently, those deer antlers right there, it's quite sexy. Like recently, you know, but at the same time, it's like, I feel like the, how I started off shooting has informed the way I shoot everything else. Mm. Um, you know, on the street, you know, you can't really line anything up. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's a game of yeah. chance, I guess. 
Um, at the same time, you can stop somebody and speak to them and take their photo while you're talking to them. And um, you can ask somebody, can I take your portrait? And they say yes, and then you could, you know, bring your camera up. Yep. And you can say, okay, well, and then you, you wait for them, and then all of a sudden they stop posing. Mm -hmm. And then right when they pose, boom, you know, it's like, bam, take that photo. Um, or a couple of them while you're talking and catching them in a uh, natural position and things like that. And that's kind of how I like to make portraits of my, uh, the people I photograph that mm. are set up. You know, I kind of, uh, very loose guidelines, and then it's kind of just watching and waiting for that moment, I guess. And it's, you know, it's it's uh, it's good exercise to maintain healthy uh, brain activity when you're <laughs> when it's raining and you're not on the street. I know, right? Oh, this is cleared up. Uh, it's cleared up a bit, right? Yeah. But it's supposed to it's supposed to rain all week. Yeah, you know, and so you know, sometimes like when you know you can you can stay at home and hate yourself because you're not producing work. Or yeah. Can, or you can produce work. Mm. You know, and I produce photographs. You know, like I mean a lot, <laughs> but it's what I like to do to keep busy. You know? Well, the the cool thing is. Um, you showed me a recent edit of your work, and you know it's a combination of thirty-five mil, medium format, black and white, color, digital, blah blah blah. Um, and I, you know, I think the way you put it together, it you know, it did create a narrative. So at this point, do you really not care about the medium you're shooting with, or is, is it more like whatever is available for you? Or I mean, I really, I, I, I mean, if you, if, if you say that you completely don't care about the medium mm -hmm. then i i kind of maybe won't believe it that much yeah um i love shooting my leica i love shooting my uh you know my nikon f3 yeah. i really miss my f4 yeah you know it just felt good to shoot um i felt comfortable shooting it mm -hmm. i like i like the way it was responsive i like the metering everything like that yeah my m6 i just like the fact that i can tuck it underneath a sweater and mm -hmm. walk around and make photographs that's right um you know but at the same time it's uh I like I like I like different things and like you can always find a way to put them all together. Definitely. Um, to create something. I mean, if it's a if they're widely varied and different, mm -hmm. you know, then yeah, it's not going to look the best. I believe together, Definitely. but at the same time, um, you know, expired slide film and and black and white can go together. Um, I mean, uh, I recently I don't know he, he might hate me for mentioning him, but. Uh, but Jason Reed is a is a is a. Why do I, why do I hate Jason Reed? No no no! I he might hate me for oh bringing oh up, okay. <laughs> he recently put together a very personal um, series uh, based on the passing of, of his father. Oh shit! Yeah. And he only had two rolls of film with him, and one roll was was old uh, 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 Fuji uh -huh. in his in his Leica, yeah. and then he had one roll of, of tri I believe, uh, in his bag, and Damn. he shot them both together, and. Honestly, like they, they look like they just belong together, mm. you know, because it looked frazzled. It looked like, you know, like you, you have the pieces, but you don't want to put them together. Definitely. And it was one. It was very compelling. It was super compelling that when I looked at it, and I loved it. Um, but, you know, and so like you can do these things, you can put these things together, you know. And yeah, it's always great to stay consistent. Um, I mean, my, my friend Emilio Buenuelos uh, only shoots Tri-X, only shoots one lens, yeah. one developer, one, one scanning process, one printing process, everything, yeah. and he is regimented. But me, I am all over the place, and mm. so I kind of found a way to harmonize that, and that's by just saying, you know what, shoot it, deal with it later. Well, maybe the, because you're shooting in such a different scattered brain type of way, maybe it's per, perhaps uh, a reflection of your creative process and who you are as a person is sure. that yeah. constantly changing and you're not so like super rigid about things yeah yeah i mean yeah that's 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 very valid it's, it's um i mean i am a pretty all over the place person <laughs> um you know but at the same time i think it i think it, it'll it bottlenecks and then and then goes centered when i'm when i'm focusing on the output mm. you know um I don't know. I think I just want my photographs to look my, like my photographs. Hmm. You know? to, to be a reflection of who you are. I, yeah, and just say, you know what? Yeah, I made that photo. That's mine. That's my photo. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it doesn't matter if it's black and white or if it's color digital or if it's black and white digital or if it's my iPhone with a VSCO preset or yeah. if it's, you know, I, it, whatever. It just doesn't matter. I make photos because I make photos. If I if I edit them to look a certain way, I do. If I don't, I don't. You know, mm -hmm. and um, it's, you know, it's just... You know what I what I like doing. Because you, know? you know, for for me as well is um, you know I'm a big fan of you know one camera one lens. I try not to have too many options because I think my personality. I get 
paralysis by analysis. Mm-hmm. Like when I have too many cameras, too many mm-hmm. lenses, I'm like, I'm about to go out and shoot. And I think to myself, crap, which camera do I bring? And it, it causes me extra stress. And, yeah. you know, I'm the type of person I like to wear, you know, same clothes every day, black, you know, yeah. black shoes. And I don't I actually don't like having choice in my life. I actually prefer having fewer options. And I think, I think that's a reflection of my personality, perhaps. I think for me, uh, I'm pretty much the same way. Like, I don't own many things. I don't own many clothes. Mm-hmm. I don't own I don't own many pairs of shoes. Two, three, maybe. Yep. Uh, you know, one work, one pair of old ones. And you got you got your Converse. One pair of shoes. Ooh, you got some uh, you got some red socks, huh? Yeah, they were. Oh, Those are pretty sexy. They, oh, they match your bed. They were on sale. Oh, nice one. Yeah, they're. A oh, uh, I they're dig it. Festive. Nice. You know, but at the same time, like the things that I do have a, a, a variety of are my cameras. Yeah. But they all serve a purpose. Like I like my my Polaroid camera, and my Polaroid camera is great for taking Polaroids. Uh, Polaroids. <laughs> it's, great, it's great for a certain style of photograph. Yeah. You know, um, my Instax wide is great for taking you know fun photos yeah. and uh, things like that, and you know photographs that I will put in my bag and I'll give to people if mm. I need them, and then we That's do nice. print exchanges or. Throw them in a zine and mail them off. Hmm. Um, you know, and then my Holgas, my things like that, they're all like very different things. So if I'm like, you know, I want to go and take, uh, you know, landscape photos. I'm not going to yeah. go out and take my um, Nikon and a 50. Yeah. It's just, I don't think that's a good landscape combo. For yeah. Me. You right. know, I'll, I'll go take my, you know, uh, a 35 or if I have something wider at the time, mm-hmm. or I'll take my Holga. And I just like the way the, that, a, that a landscape looks through a classic lens. So it'll, it'll depend on your, your mood and what yeah. you're shooting and the experience. Yeah. You know, and I think the mark of somebody that, you know, um, loves photography and not just one type of photography is, you know, they have a few different cameras. Mm, definitely. I love photography. Um, what I do is, you know, street photography or portraiture mm. or, you know, whatever. You know what I mean, but as a whole, like if I if I had to take it take it or leave it, I would yeah. take it. I take all photography because you know it's in, it informs everything. Like if you you get inspiration from everything, you know, and it like I mean some of my favorite photographers aren't street photographers, mm. you know. So who are, who are some of your favorite photographers at the moment? Uh, right now, like, yeah, like uh, like like living or not. Uh, living? it could be anybody, dead well, or living, could well, be fictional. <laughs> Out of out of the people I know, yeah, uh, I really like Ola Ola Billman. Yeah, yeah. Ola, Ola says hi. Ola's great. I like how he calls he calls you yo. Yes, he does. Yo. <laughs> Ola's great. Uh, he's a good friend. He's somebody I always bounce stuff back off of, mm-hmm. you know, and like we always talk about portraits. Like, hey, have you seen this person before? Yeah, that's things cool. like that. Um, I like. Uh, I love Richard Kern. Mm. I fuck. I, he's fucking great. He's a pervert, and I love him. Yeah, because he just wears it, and it's nice. just him. And he's amazing at making photographs. It's just one of those things where he's like, you know, this is what I do, you know. And it's is like, there like a favorite photo you have? Uh, in New York Girls? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Um, this might be NSFW. Yeah, there will there will be titties. I think these are just very um, super '90s, '80s, '90s style, you know, photographs. But yeah. I just think the way he puts them together are amazing. Mm. You know, because you kind of like. I don't know. Like, I'm not really focused on the fact that they, these women are naked. I'm I, it, like the whole thing is very visually compelling, you know. Mm. Um, the way he uses colors and yeah, you know, and it's like I don't know. It's just it's just kick ass. There's like a photo of Marilyn Manson in here naked too. So. Oh, nice one. And I think that's cool that he you know slipped him in. What's the what's the cover look like again? The color, the cover. All right, so Richard Kern, New York Girls. Yeah, I got what the fashion. I don't know. I like. I just like. I like everything. I like to go on. Um, uh, American suburb, you know, and, yeah. and look at things. I like to go into certain Flickr groups. Mm-hmm. And any Flickr groups in particular? Uh, anything Dirty Harry curates. Yeah. Uh, super strong at yeah. that. Um, altered states of agoraphobia. Yeah. It's great. Um, there's just so many. There's just yeah. so many out there, you know. And it's like it's like just type in the keywords, look up, yeah. look up tags, you know, yeah. look up tags, and you'll you'll find everything. You uh-huh. know, it's just. There's just so many beautiful things to look at and gain inspiration from, and mm. I think that like one of the reasons why people get in street photography rats is because they're always just looking at just street photography, street photographers, yeah. And, yeah. It's just, and it's bugging them. So either they see things 
that they're not able to photograph because mm -hmm. of location, yeah. or they see things able, they're not able to photograph based on equipment. Definitely. But then when you start looking at fine art photographers, it's mm. like this isn't it doesn't fucking matter what I'm using. Definitely. You know what I mean? I'm not you. I don't care. Who cares what I'm using? This is what I did. Look at what I did, not what I'm using. You know. And on the streets, you obviously want something small. You want something quiet. You want something responsive, zone focusing, fast auto focusing, everything like yeah. that. But when you're just interested in making a photograph, you know, um, you don't need any of that. You know, you can you can bring an eight by ten out, and that's that's all you're gonna do. You know, mm. um, and so like I think that's why like I have so many busy things going on is because even if I just have my phone, I'll go out and I'll make some photographs. That's good. You know, so. So what are some uh, things that people should look forward to from Joel Geary? Oh, I don't know. Uh, stuff, zines. <laughs> um, I, I believe that it's, uh, it's already booked, but I'll have a, I'm having a split show in, in March. Oh, congrats. Where at? It's at Book and Job Gallery. Oh, right on. Gallery I always with, hang out with, at. Uh, with who? My, um, it's with my friend Brian Books. It's uh -huh. going to be um, uh, a split portrait. That's great. You know, type, uh, type one wall of piece. You That's know? cool. Um, it's downtown. It's on Geary Street in San Francisco. Book and Job Gallery. Yeah. Um, other than that, you know, it's just uh, uh, more zines, working hard. Uh, I want to put together, you know, a lot more stuff. I, I want to show more. I want to submit more. I want to be a part of things more, you know. That's awesome, man. Progress. Cool. Be better. And maybe we could uh, switch to the seats. Let me, let me sit there. You can put the camera on me. Okay. So why don't you ask me some questions now? So oh get right. Back at me. <laughs> uh, some questions. Yeah. Let's see. Well, um, what are some of your favorite photographs? Uh, my, photographers. My favorite photographers at the moment. Um, I'm super deep into Kudelka right now. Okay. Uh, I just got uh, Exiles, and mm -hmm. I've just really been so moved by his philosophy of life. Yeah. In the sense that here's a guy who just did not give a flying fuck about what anyone else thought. And he lived a life true to himself in the sense that, you know, I mean, he hasn't had a job, what, last 40 years, his, uh, well, his mid-70s, and, you know, he's dedicated his entire soul and being to photography. Of course, to the detriment of, like, you know, his family life and this and that, but it's really proven to me the power of persistence and knowing that you could create your own lifestyle. Because I think a lot of people make excuses like, oh, I want to make these kind of photos or I want to do this in life, but... It's X, Y, and Z, which is preventing you from doing it. If you look at Kudelka's life as an example, man, he just he just went out and did it. And, yeah. and also, I'm quite inspired by the fact that most of his big bodies of work have taken a really long time. So oftentimes, I feel so rushed. Like, I, I keep getting new work out there, just like quick, 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 social media, Instagram. But you know, you look at gypsies, you look at exiles, each of which have taken over 10 years. Yeah. That's like dedication in terms of uh, taking his time. And also the fact that even his new stuff, have you seen his like new panoramics and... A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when I first looked at it, I wasn't the biggest fan. I'm like, dude, why don't you just go back shooting 35 mil, you know, whatever. But, you know, in his interviews he's saying, I think the reason why I kept photographing after all these years and Cartier Bresson stopped shooting was the fact that I kept pushing myself and evolving in my photography. And uh, even myself now, I'm shooting a lot more medium format, urban landscape, not so many people shots. And part of me feels that maybe I should be shooting more people because that's kind of what my audience and followers like to see and they're like, oh, I don't understand why you're shooting landscapes and stuff like that, but it's it's probably the biggest thing that's inspired me. Um, so Kudelka, I mean, God love the Eggleston, another guy who just didn't give a flying fuck about what other people thought and he doesn't take himself too seriously. I think people over-intellectualize him and his work, but he's just like, he just sees nice colors and he just photographs them pretty sure. much. Um, and uh, yeah, last, last photographer is probably... Uh, Lee Friedlander, I mean, because I'm interested in urban landscapes. Also shooting with the Hasselblad. He was in San Francisco recently. Oh, was he? Yeah. For what? I don't know. Just was around, I believe. Yeah. Somebody told me. He's like, hey, look out. He's here. Oh, man. Yeah, but, I mean, I freaking love Friedlander's work. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sitting on about maybe like 25 rolls of portrait 400, that uh, 120 medium format film I shot during my last trip, when to get processed. Not looking forward to scanning all that stuff because yeah. I hate scanning. <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, those are probably the the biggest photographers I'm inspired by right now. Cool. Um, let's see. Next question. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you ever feel like you want to take a break from the blog and just kind of go away for a little bit and make some photos? Uh, that's that's a great question. I mean, uh, I'll give you an example. 
So I just got back from doing like a six month trip abroad. I was in Stockholm for about a week and a half, London for two weeks, Dubai for another week and a half. And at the moment, I'm crazy jet lagged. You know, Dubai and uh, the Bay Area, it's about a 12 hour time difference. So 8 a.m. there is 8 p.m. here. So now the time I wake up should be the time I sleep and vice versa. So I'm like totally kind of fucked up right now in terms of yeah. just like where my brain's at. So I think moving forward, trying to do less international travel because it just kind of screws me up. Um, also, this is horrible. I, I think you'd be really sad to hear this show. I think I'm actually allergic to coffee oh, <laughs> or yeah? caffeine. Oh, wow. Like the last few days, I've just been having coffee. Yeah, it's like my espressos, whatever. And my throat's been inflamed um, like 40%. It's mm. hard for me to breathe out after. I don't know if it's coffee or it's the caffeine. I don't know. I might start drinking decaf. but So that's been horrible. So I'm jet lagged. And I haven't had coffee the last two days because I'm, I'm just trying to figure out if I have any food, food allergies. Cause, yeah. Um, yeah, like, I think I'm allergic to, like, cashews and nuts and milk and alcohol. Like, you're all just the good a, stuff. You're just a life. sickly little boy, aren't you? I know. All I've been <laughs> eating is ground beef, salmon, and, like, yeah. kale. Oh, yeah. Um, so those are all good things. Yeah, but uh, anyways, at the moment, uh, I'm just, like, total... Besides seeing you, I'm in total like recluse mode after yeah. I do a long tra uh, trip abroad. I just need to kind of put myself in a cave for about like two or three weeks. Um, and at the moment, does that does that include not blogging or does it include? Um, well, it, so what that includes is uh, not checking emails, not checking social media, just not using the internet actually. But uh, at the moment, I'm actually writing a, a book review of uh, Exiles. Okay. And it's it's going to be really thorough. I'm, I'm like an eighth in. It's going to be quite long. But uh, essentially what I want to do more of is I want to focus more on writing and research, I guess, and doing more book reviews. So maybe taking a break from the blog in the sense that I don't want to feel obliged to always be uploading new, uh, new stuff and always being on social media. So like, I'd rather take the approach like posting less often, but really high quality or just really in-depth stuff. So you know, maybe posting like once a week. I want to do more book reviews. Do you, um, do you feel that if you... I don't know that if you don't post a lot or if you're not always up with your your 10 things you've learned or things yeah. like that do you feel like do you feel scared maybe that like a uh, your audience might go away because of getting bored like they'll go look yeah. for something that's always oh, yeah, there oh, yeah always um i mean i used to have this anxiety if i didn't post every single day and if i was always on facebook twitter social media that like everyone would disappear people would stop attending my workshops I'd be homeless, literally on the streets. My girlfriend would dump me. Like all these worst case scenario stuff. And uh, well, even, even at the moment, yeah, I'm like, you know, I always, I always had this fear that, um, you know, let's say street photography is just a fad, and then, you know, uh, I can't make my livelihood doing uh, workshops anymore. Then uh, going back to, let's say, working at a cubicle and stuff like that. So you know, I'm scared of that. Would, would you go back to the assembly line? Oh, hell so to no! Hell no! <laughs> I'm not. You gotta fight. No. Uh, if I were to go back to doing, I guess, more traditional established work, I'd be probably a teacher. Yeah. Because I, I love teaching. Um, that's where my heart's at. Either that or maybe a barista, but now that I'm like maybe allergic to coffee, that might... Oh, you not... can still make it. I don't drink anymore, but uh, I'll still pour somebody a beer. Yeah, that's good. Um, but yeah, but at the same time, I've kind of... So that's kind of one realize that. that I'm not gonna become homeless. And yeah. My my girlfriend Cindy supports me a lot too. So good. Sugar I'm, mamas. I'm a lot less anxious about that, unfortunately. Well, that's good because a lot of the times I like I think that it's a good it's a good thing to relate with any photographer when it comes to posting. Like, if I don't blog every day, that all of a sudden my does it does it not exist? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And so I feel like, so like okay, let's hypothetically anonymous hacks Eric Kim photography blog and was like. We're taking this guy down. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden, you have no more Facebook likes. Yeah, yeah. Where do you go from there? Do you wake up and you say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm still a photographer, and that's why I started this because I'm a photographer. Yeah. Do you still have photography if you don't have a blog, or is it or is it synonymous with you? Well, if, if that happened, yeah, definitely, I'd, I'd be freaking the fuck out and oh my god, I got hacked, you know, and stuff like that. But I kind of realized that. I mean, this is a little ironic to say is that social media is. It's because of social media I can make my livelihood. Sure. But as time's gone on, I realized how unimportant social media is in a lot of ways. Um, so, I mean, I guess uh, for me, I should treat my blog differently than social media in the sense that for me, the blog is like my home. It's, it's something personal and, you know, it's self-hosted. So everything technically belongs to me on the blog. Whereas with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that's all owned by third-party people. 
And I, I think at the end of the day, you know, I'm still I'm still making photos every day. I shoot a lot on my phone. I love Visco. I use the analog three preset a lot. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually been having a huge kick up to Instagram, uh, shooting film. I love that. But I think for me, at the end of the day, my biggest purpose in life isn't so much my photography. It's more educational side of things. Because I think at heart, um, you know, my my parents they're all been teachers, and uh, the greatest joy I get is sharing some sort of insight or technique or tip or whatever that gives a young photographer or a photographer starting off some insight and some inspiration so at the end of the day yeah i would i would consider myself probably more focused on teaching and education than my personal photography but of course i want to make some decent photos along the way too right yeah so what's up for you for the new year do you plan on putting together like a small little zine or do you want to do a showing or i I mean that's, that's a great question i mean with anything like i mean like what do you what do you what do you want to do? Fuck the people. Fuck the <laughs> fuck the viewers. Fuck the view count. Uh, the, the the Facebook likes and all that shit. What do you What do you want to do? Like, what do uh, you want to do personally? Okay, I'm I'm so glad you asked me that because no one ever asked me that. Um, what do I want to do? I want to write books. Okay. About. I want to write books. Like. Um. Well, I want to I want to write books that mix photography and philosophy sure and maybe uh if you could describe it like uh, so i'm a total addict junkie for self-help books i love self-help books okay uh they've helped me a lot and i always get lots of wisdom and insights from you know that and philosophy and stuff like that so i don't really see many photography books that talk about the philosophy of photo uh, photography in terms of like why you photograph in a way that's like common speed you know what i mean like it's always reading these philosophy slash photography books about like super academic it's super dry it's like it's just really boring I, I don't like reading any of it um and no one ever talks about in photography how to be happy and to feel fulfilled and to be creative and so almost i want to maybe even create a new genre like photography self-help maybe is um, it, but the, the problem do you, is do I don't you like, feel do you feel that you can you can become happy because of uh, because of photography or do you feel like because for me photography just makes me happy hmm. like I don't know is it is it like something that you're like you're trying to like explore the spiritual aspect of it I guess so I mean the question I always ask myself because you know photography does bring me a lot of joy as well and the process of shooting get my film developed sometimes even scanning and uploading sharing getting critiques it all brings me a lot of joy but I get this about maybe once a week now is that like I'm like why am I doing this like why do I make photos and is it really for myself? Is it for my audience? Mm-hmm. Do I want to make it super personal or do I want to make it more like sociological and outwards looking? I mean, at the moment, I'm, I'm thinking that it has to be more personal because mm-hmm. your perspective of the world is unique from anyone else. And some of my favorite photographers are the ones who made their photography very personal. Uh, Josh White is one of my good friends in Korea. He's influenced my thinking a lot. He's straying le- less away from street photography and photographing his friends and family. So I've actually been photographing well, my friends in Sydney a lot more. Well, do you think that that's straying away from street photography? Because, I mean, the way, I mean, is it the same way he shoots still? Because, I mean, I photograph the people in my life all the time. Yeah. Vogel does. Um, I mean, who else photographs? Uh, uh, R- Ralph P. on Flickr. Uh, Jinju yeah. on Flickr. Um, Blake, Blake Andrews, he's done really good. Yeah, Blake. Yeah. You know, everybody yeah. like that. And so, like, I feel like... I feel I feel like it's not like straying away from it. I feel like it, it definitely informs of how you're you're finding those moments. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I guess I'm approaching shooting my friends and family kind of in a street photography way, in the sense that I'm trying to make capture beautiful moments, but it's, it's a lot harder. Funny enough, I actually find it harder to capture good decisive moment and candid most of my friends and family and loved ones than people on the street. But you know, even on the way here, you know, I have you know I have my little context. T3 in my pocket. And, yeah. you know, I made about like five or six photos I saw on the street were just interesting. I just uh, snapped away. So I think street photography will always be part of my DNA. And it's, I love being on the streets. I love exploring, uh, making images, interacting with people. But yeah, I think I'm trying to shoot street photography or shoot portraits of my family and uh, people in my life kind of the way I shoot street photography. But do you it's, think, it's hard. <laughs> do, you think, do you think maybe you're... you're um you're going through a, what every other photographer that hasn't been doing it for 20 years is going through, where they start discovering other avenues and 
I mean, because bottom line is, is like, I haven't been making photographs for more than, you know, like seriously, for more than five years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've taken photographs and stuff, yeah. you know, over the course of my life Definitely. and things. But at the same time, after, after two years of just wanting to shoot street, I was like, oh, portraits. Oh, this or that. Then after three years of shooting street, I was like, oh, well, maybe I want to photograph nude photographs and yeah. fine art and things like that. Do you think you're just discovering a side of it that is uh, is uh, due to maybe being you know younger and 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 not not so, not new but just going through the motions of discovering photography and just and other avenues, especially because you're uh, you're you you have access to so much photography you know through your blog through the people you meet yeah. through the internet and that maybe it's just one of those things where it's like it's 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 not so much as like. Um, you're straying away from everything, but you're, you're discovering it and you're saying, you know what, I'm going to look into it. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I think, I think you're right. It's, it's funny because I almost feel like at this moment, maybe once a week, I get like a, a photography crisis in terms of like my identity. And the reason I actually read a lot of uh, philosophy and um, the reason I'm actually interested in sociology is that I'm always striving to discover who I am and who I am as a human being and how to be happy, how to be fulfilled, and there are a lot of times I feel like I stray away from my path, and I think a lot about what my purpose is and who I am. And so, yeah, you're definitely right, photographically speaking. I think at the moment, street photography is the best way I can communicate that. Sure. But I, I still, I do, I do, I do agree that I, you know, through doing all this stuff for the blog, with writing articles on the masters, it's opened up so much in terms of uh, other stuff. So, like, I'm actually really interested in uh, you know, fashion photography. And sure. A lot of this personal documentary type photography, as well as um, you know, photojournalism, is very interesting to me. And I think at the end of the day, street photography isn't the most interesting thing to me. It's it's more just it's more. I guess I'm more interested in sociology, psychology, philosophy, and street photography is I at this moment the best way to capture in a photograph how I feel about the world. Sure. But at the same time, I'm augmenting that with I more think, personal photography. I think personally for me, street photography has helped me understand how to capture how I'm feeling in every aspect of every photo I take now, especially um, especially because it's it's a it's not only a means to uh, to understand your surroundings and relations to yeah. me, but it's a way to accept them. Yeah. You That's know, a good one. because uh, if if your viewers aren't familiar with the Strangers Collective, there is uh, a member named Jared. Yeah, uh, Oreo, and he is uh, working on a blog now based on photographs of his, uh, basically every day of his son's life. Oh wow! It's called the Boy and His Dad. Oh, that's really sweet. And it what, is. What was the URL? I I think it's dot com or it might be dot tumblr. A boy what? A boy and his dad. A boy and his dad dot com or boy dot and his tumblr. Dad dot yeah. Tumblr. Yeah, it's out there wow. and it's wonderful. But his photographs are are they're street through and through, mm. even though they they have one common factor and that's his son oh. but I think that's that's uh, it, it's it's what he knows it's what he does and it's how he communicates and it's how he shows the world mm. what he's feeling and how he's thinking that's great and also showing what he loves and he loves his son mm. you know like mm. Vogel Justin Vogel photographs you know Vance all the time the yeah. kid's the kid's beautiful yeah you know but at, and, and at the same time you, you know it's like what is a street photographer to do when he has a child you know you can't leave him at home you can't say oh hey Stay in the stroller or something like that yeah. while I go snap this photograph. Yeah. You 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 learn how to integrate. You learn how to adapt, and you learn how to carry on. And so, and if you don't, you just you, you stay stagnant. And that's yeah. and that's whatever. Some people can't do it, and some people love it so much that everything is the street to them. You know, um, I, you know, and Winogram would be a great example of that as well. Uh, you know, the guy made photos everywhere. You know, elevators, yeah. zoos, the street, a car. Yeah. You know. Um, Don Hudson, Don Hudson's the, that guy's the jam. That guy is that guy. You know, God bless the internet for for, yeah. for showing me that man. You know, um, all he did was he spend his whole life making photographs, and look what he's done with it. You know, he's now got this super amazing body of work, yep. and it's a reflection of where he's been, what he did, and everything. He didn't say, okay, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go walk the Embarcadero, I'm going to go walk to the financial district today. That man said, all right, well, here's my camera. I'm going to live and I'm going to make photographs of it. And I think that's a, a, a wonderful way to look at stuff. Um, and maybe maybe through your uh, your introspective time that you're having now, you'll discover that as well. You know, who knows? Yeah, definitely. Um, 
Yeah, because I think at the end of the day, I think the best photos are the ones that come from the heart. Sure. And um, yeah, and that's what I'm looking more for my photography is capturing more emotion and uh, the way I see the world. More emotion from somebody or more emotion from you? I guess both. Okay. Um, because for me personally, I think it's all got to come from you know inside first. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I'm I'm a very uh, cold, dark bastard. Inside. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're the worst. Last last question, and then last, we'll, we'll go uh, walk around a bit. Last question. Where's your Leica? Um, collecting dust at home. Collect, <laughs> collecting dust at home. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, at the moment, since I'm carrying my Hasselblad, oh, in my backpack, it's like cool, I'm freaking heavy, and then. I have the Hasselblad in backpack, point and shoot in the pocket, and I'm like, set. Um, All right. But uh, yeah, I mean, I brought my Hasselblad when I traveled abroad um, yeah. for the last six weeks. I'm glad I brought it for the experience, but I'm not going to do that again. It's just way too heavy. Yeah. I think uh, moving forward, just the best travel camera, just like it. Just bring a Leica film, that's, that's yeah. all I need. And for just sure. my phone. Cool. I, Taking photos of my food and coffees. Well, I can't drink coffee anymore, so yeah. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Well, we'll, we'll see. All right, well, we're going to sign out. All see, right. Say see you later, Street Togs. See you later, Street Togs. Signing out. Signing out. All right. Peace out. That was fun.